Hey friends, welcome back to the weekly energy at the Intuitive Lens YouTube channel. My name is Grace. I'm an astrologer, tarot card reader, and we're doing weekly videos to tell you about what's going on this week. How can you best interact and utilize the energy that is available to the collective? So we're talking about August 21st to the 27th. The most notable transit of this week, I would say, is finally Venus goes direct as well as we're entering Virgo season over Venus retrograde and for the entire duration of Leo season, seeing as Venus was stationed retrograde in the sign of Leo. I hope that you have had some time to think about how you want to experience the things that Venus represents. Love, beauty, harmony, relationships, passion. How do you want to thrive and how do you want relationships that you nurture to help you to thrive in exchange. Have you sensed or tapped into where the shift may have occurred? Where that expansion might be for you? Here's a hint, check to see where Leo is in your natal chart. If you don't know what your natal chart looks like or the house rulerships, you can go and check out another YouTube video that I made. Mm, it will show you how to get your natal chart from astro-seek.com, which is the site I use for a lot of this. Our spotlight is gonna move to Virgo now because the sun is moving into, an, into Virgo. Mercury is stationing retrograde in Virgo. What we know about retrogrades and Mercury retrograde is that things are going to be shifting or switching tracks, reshuffling, if you will. And there's a really auspicious transit at the start of Virgo season. It is the Venus square Jupiter, as well as Mars opposite Neptune. This gives the feeling of like, what may be stopping you from achieving that which you want is your own willingness to go there. Are you gonna go there? Let me read from my notes here and, and tell you a little bit about what I wrote. Your willingness to go there may be the thing that makes it happen. So many of us stop ourselves before we achieve that which we desire. Why is that? Maybe some mental themes cropping up, showing you where your power resides to get what you want. There is a sense of go with the flow, but Earthy Virgo wants us to stay vigilant, be aware and nimble. Virgo is a sign of health service assessment. So as we release, our grasp on that which we call life. And we are floating down this river. The sense of go with the flow is not like, you know, throw your hands up and just relax. I think it. this is a time for being extra observant. I think vigilance is a word that comes up for me. I did write vigilance. And also I wrote, get ready to engage your resources, talent, skills, knowledge as spirit opens doors to opportunities. So what have you picked up on in the last month or summer season? What is ready to be engaged? You know, like shifting gears. Do not dwell on what falls away. Trust yourself. Be clear with others on what you want. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There's another very helpful transit this week. And this is going to speak to your leadership your ambitiousness, your desire to go there, your ability to go there. Like I went there, this is all about taking risks, which is, it's great I think to have this in Virgo season, but remember Mercury is in retrograde. That doesn't mean it's not a bad thing. It's just, we are experiencing shifts. So let me tell you about the Mars trine Pluto. This other major helpful transit, Mars is in Virgo, Pluto's in Capricorn, this is hashtag goals, <laughs> double earth, fire, and water. You are ready, to, perhaps, to deal with the most difficult aspects of your life. Things move forward because you are able to step into leadership. Uh, this reminds me of this idea of be, do, have. A lot of us approach life from the perspective that in order to be who we want to be, we have to have certain things, and we put off our... The, the case of our embodiment to put ourselves in alignment with what we want and we don't do the things that require our action because we don't have we're like we don't have what it takes you do have what it takes 
It's be, do, have. The having is, it comes last. And a lot of us approach life from this angle of having something first before we can be something or do something else. I'll give you a really quick example. This is something that I did, did all the time when I was younger. I can't get a tattoo until I lose some weight. I can't cut my hair until I look a certain way. I can't do this, you know, I can't, I can't do this until this. These like preconceived, made up, totally false if then statements or until this. So be aware of that. Be aware of your, uh, we'll call them gates. How you gatekeep yourself from your own success. We're not making excuses this week, that's for sure. You're doing something. What is it? Anyway, um, with this transit, Mars trying Pluto, your passion is magnetic. Whether you whether your focus has been on business, health, love, relationship to self, knowledge, you know, like wisdom, acquiring wis acquiring wisdom. This is a great aspect for positive transformation. Virgo is lending us its critical eye. Don't abuse it by being too critical on yourself or jealous of others. Lean into your own source of inspiration and begin creating. Um, do you guys follow Moon Omens on Instagram? Because right after I did these notes, I read this quote on Instagram and it was perfect. It says, there is nothing in this universe that has more power to harm you than your own conscious negative thoughts and beliefs. Don't attach, observe, and stay in your power. <laughs> Mars moves into Libra and will be in Libra until October 2nd, or sorry, 12th. It says 12th. Again, this is Western astrology. Vedic astrology is going to have completely different dates. We're talking about Western astrology here because that's what I do. This is a great energy for partnerships. Libra is about harmony um, and togetherness, balance. Um, if you have people in your life who can who have similar goals to you, this is a great time to partner up. Mm. Since friends is, and since friends and associates can also sometimes act as accountability partners when we are feeling indecisive, Libra. Mars, remember, is how we go after things that we want. It's how we take action in the world. It's our drive. It's also our sex drive. So when it comes to relationships, it's like um, somebody might be willing to take a stand, make a move, or maybe there's, there's, you know, this, this could be something, there could be something about relationships here. I think this is also great for business partnerships and a whole lot of other things. So you can let me know how, how it goes for you the next month, right? Month, month and a half, month and a half until October 12th. With Mars and Libra, in all things, the way that we move, it's with grace and style. Charm is everywhere. Good for collaborations, community building. Watch out for passive aggressiveness or fake kindness. This is where discerning Virgo energy is very useful. Overall, more is being revealed to us at this time. Remember to listen. Trust your guidance that you receive. Focus on what resonates. We are also being discerning from within, understanding our own drive from a place of knowing our thoughts, fears, desires, and past conditioning. That concludes the notes. Man, the astrology notes. I did a different sort of approach this time. There was a lot to say about this week, and I needed a new way to organize it. Uh, but this is really helpful. You know, you're getting... Um, you're getting a lot of what I'm study but a lot of times this becomes really useful in practical one-on-one -on -one settings as well as in workshop settings knowing this so that we can work together 
in a group setting or one-on-one -on -one to look at your charts and tell you how each of these transits are personally affecting you. That's why we do those. I have announced a workshop. It is a collaboration. Um, Mars and Libra, of course it is. It's a collab with Jen, who's a life coach, among many other things. And we are doing a six-week course. I'm going to drop a link to that in the description box below. You can check it out some more. Right now, what we're going to do is just get a tarot reading for the collective. See what wants to come through. How do you feel about Virgo season? Happy birthday, Virgos. Almost, but not yet. Energy underneath. Ten of Pentacles. This is destiny, family, legacy. Look at this beautiful energy. Whoa. Damn. Underneath, we have a lot of... <laughs> I kept pulling because it was a lot of really positive energy underneath. So this is great because last week, remember the last few weeks have been kind of tense, right? Uh, Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, Six of Cups, the Star, that's Aquarius energy, Four of Wands, Three of Pentacles. kind of got caught up talking about this Mars and Libra because I didn't get this sense from my notes, but now from this reading, I'm really getting a sense that this is for somebody um, who is receiving something that they've always wanted. Something that they've been waiting for is finally established here. Um, the, the last card underneath was this death card in reverse. So it's almost like there was some, that's Scorpio energy transformation. I'm getting the sense that there, somebody has helped you transform in some way. This three of pentacles, that's a collaborative card. This, the six of cups, that is like a gift. So you receive, this is a gift of receiving of something. And the, the energy that we started with, the Ten of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups, this is sort of like, this could be like extremely positive. It could also be um, comfortable in your comfort zone, like things being handed to you and um, just that that being that comfort of having things sort of as you as you want it it comes to you it could be for somebody who hasn't really had to work too hard for what they want or just that's not necessarily the case but but per, perhaps it's like things come easily to you do you feel that way do you feel that things come easily for you um Otherwise, it might be for somebody who where that's the opposite and suddenly there's this like breakthrough. There's some help that's come in to transition into something that you've always wanted. Either way, the, the energy is what I'm really getting. The energy, it feels good. Let's move on. Page of Wands, the beginning of a new journey. Inspiration, the lovers in reverse. Yeah. Do you remember this card was showing up a lot a few weeks ago? Mm. That was the nine of eight of swords, sorry. Three of cups. I feel I was getting that feeling. Queen of Swords. Reverse. This is tough. Your journey, if this is for you, you're done waiting for something. Page of Pentacles. Two of Wands, Page of Pentacles, Page of Swords. Look at all the pages in this reading. There is something brand new coming in, for sure. Maybe this easy energy is what I was picking up on with these pages. 
because the pages are like a youthful energy, it could feel as though we're attempting something with this beginner's mind, something about Okay, here's my hot take on what this reading is really trying to say. I feel that something having to do with your family or something that has been passed down to you. I would also consider like generational things mixed into into this. Um, it, it could have to do with your resources, but I feel like it's also a lot more than that. I feel like this is a whole lifestyle thing which encompasses our thoughts, our feelings, our actions as well as our resources, you've been wishing for something more, or maybe just different. And I feel like what's happening here is there's like this opening to spirit, page of wands. And as soon as you make a little bit of space, that, that first action to make a little bit of room in your mind, I'll say, because we have a lot of swords here. I see Gemini, Aquarius, those are air signs. And and swords are the air element as well. Page of swords, queen of swords. You're creating some space for you that gets you closer to lining up with your sense of truth. This has required your patience. This has required you investigating your relationships. I feel that you are no longer tolerating, for example, friendships that don't feel like friendships, friendships that don't feel joyous and thriving. Um, what may have been keeping you there is your own mindset, some sort of toxic pattern or mindset. And so you've been very patient, I think, in with yourself, and with other people, especially dealing with certain uncomfortable situations or certain relationships that more or less are handed to us or given to us. Think of just like the, the Six of Cups can also be relationships from the past. This could be just like unconscious patterns. You know, when, when we meet people, when we meet people who become our friends or lovers or partners, um, and suddenly years pass. This is sort of what this feels like, is like you're, there's been some sort of pattern, there's been some sort of development, you know, on all sides, but you have been in a situation because it was handed to you or it felt like it was a given. It felt like it was just always there. And your own mental entrapment right? Eight of Swords could have been the thing keeping you stuck looking through this illusion that the, that these relationships, that these situations were for you, but deep down feeling, knowing that something wanted to change. You wanted to heal some of the things for your, these, some situations for yourself and have that reflect in the world around you for sure. Two of Wands, I see you looking at what's more. And so where are you now? This is the story I think given to me through all of this, but where are you now is I think you're going within. I think you're setting yourself some boundaries. Um, I think you're saying no a lot more. The Page of Pentacles, this is about doing something differently because we know more. This is beginner's mind for sure. I love Virgo energy for beginner's mind. We are assessing things. We're taking our time. Just because Venus is out of retrograde doesn't mean we're not in its shadow and that a bunch of other planets aren't entering retrograde like Mercury and others. So in the final column here, what is our, you know, what is next? Eight of Swords, Three of Wands, Page of Swords. I would urge you to consider that in a moment of breakthrough, 
you know, this, this feels a bit downhill, not like in a bad way and actually in, in the best way possible. It feels like coasting on a bicycle downhill. It's all downhill. Like it's easy from here. It may feel easy from here and I'm not going to say that's not true. It's whatever your experience is. But when the page of swords I see in the reverse, the medicine or a message of this could be something wanting to, you know, a message wanting to come in or something like that, a download or, or an actual message from another person, or um, this could be your action on an idea. Be open and aware to messages, ideas, thoughts that are around you. Um, if you drive too quickly past something, you'll miss the sights and the sounds of what is around you if you move too quickly. Do you, am I explaining this okay? I think so. I think it's like you've experienced some sort of lucidity or clarity. I think that things are feeling pretty good right now. I think you're in an exploratory mode. And I think that's wonderful. Page of Swords in, re in reverse, I would just say, be aware of how fast you're moving. Don't get too ahead of yourself. Um, take exquisite care of yourself this week. I want to thank you for being here. And well, welcome to the new subscribers. I hope you enjoy the video. There's a recommended listening in the description box below, as well as a link to my workshop that's starting September 9th. So I hope you check it out. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next week.